Welcome to New Testament Survey 2, Lesson 1. In this course, we're going to cover the Pauline letters. Uh, well, we'll uh, deal with the remainder of the general epistles in uh, New Testament Survey 3. So, Lesson 1, we'll go over today, we'll go over an introduction and a, a, an overview of Paul's letters. Uh, in the next lesson that I post, we'll go over Galatians. Uh, then we'll go from there through the journeys that Paul is taking on his missionary journeys and the letters that he's writing as a result of them. So, for example, uh, while on his second missionary journeys, we'll go through the letters of First and Second Thessalonians. While on his third missionary journey, we'll go through the letters that he writes, which are First and Second Corinthians and Romans. We'll cover, uh, after that, the prison epistles, the four letters written from prison, Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon, and Philippians. And we'll cover the pastoral epistles, which are also coincidentally prison epistles, but we'll cover them as uh, pastoral epistles as well. We'll review the takeaways uh, for the Pauline epistles, and then we'll prepare for the final exam. The course requirements for this uh, course is to uh, each week complete the re review section. Also go through the reading plan on page four. One of the nice things about the Pauline epistles is the ability for us to actually read the letters because they're short enough to do uh, as we walk through the course. Um, you'll need to pass the final exam and submit an essay. The essay requirements for this course, write an essay presenting the major themes of the Pauline epistles. Uh, so you want to identify uh, a number of the major themes, and then you'll clearly state which, uh, each theme, what each theme is and where it appears in the letters. And in your thesis statement, what I'd like you to do is identify the themes that you believe to be most important. Make sure you defend your choice with evidence from Scripture. Uh, the essay needs to be 600 words, but not more than nine. So, Two to four pages uh, should be the maximum for this essay. When we looked at the overview of the New Testament, we looked at, in New Testament Survey 1, the historical narratives of the Gospels, uh, the four Gospels, three of them being synoptic or similar, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then the Johannian Gospel or the Johannian writing of John's Gospel. And then we looked at the um, historical look at the start and the uh, start of the church and the spread of the gospel in the book of Acts. In the epistles, uh, we're really going to be looking at a, a perspective of the writers looking at not what, the, what occurred in the event, which is what you see in the historical writings, but what the impact of that event is. So this is really uh, both the general... Uh, epistle writers, so James and uh, the writer of Hebrews and Jude and Peter and John, as well as Paul, who is the writer of the majority of the epistles, are looking back and they're trying to explain what, uh, what the impact of the event of Jesus Christ coming into the world is. And so we shift our view from New Testament Survey 1 and New Testament Survey 2, uh, where we're trying to find and understand what the what does it mean that Jesus Christ came into the world. And because of that, the epistles are rich with, um, with uh, real practical application and understanding. We group Paul's letters um, and try to understand them, at least in this course, in light of his travels and his journeys. So there are three missionary journeys, and we're going to look through Acts as we go through these. And you'll see in the missionary journeys, and I'm going to give you an example of how we use Acts really to guide us through uh, Paul's writings in the first missionary journeys, uh, roughly in this uh, time period of 47 to 49, uh, we have uh, Paul making his first rounds, particularly through the area of Galatia and Asia, and he travels particularly throughout the area of Galatia. In his second missionary journey, roughly 50 to 52, and again, these dates move depending upon your view of the dating, and, um, and so they may shift by uh, as many as five years, say, in the different views, his uh, theological views. But in the second missionary journey, Paul travels through uh, Macedonia and Achaia, and he stayed particularly at Corinth for 18 months. In his third journey, which is uh, roughly 52 to 56, uh, we see Paul traveling through Asia and Macedonia, and he spends three years in Ephesus. That's the 
uh, highlight of that trip. While he's traveling, he's establishing churches and he's maintaining, maintaining contact or revisiting churches that he's previously established. So the letters are seen in light of those travels because he had been there with the exception of uh, the church at Rome uh, where he had not been to yet while he's writing there. Uh, he had typically been to a church, he had preached the gospel, and now he's answering questions after he's left about the uh, usually particularly doctrinal issues. And so uh, the missionary journeys play an important part in the review of the Pauline uh, writings, and they give us the context for what's going on in those letters. So Typically, we would read those letters alone and by themselves, but if we look at Acts, we can get a sense of what's going on with the church that has been established and what happened when Paul was there. The other thing we can see in the Pauline writings is his imprisonment and the impact on his imprisonment, uh, particularly his imprisonment, and now there are uh, a number of views here on Paul's imprisonment, that for, for example, the number of times Paul was in prison, uh, generally thought to be two, maybe as many as three, um, and um, where he was first in house uh, arrest in Rome, and those conditions were uh, relatively easy and simple, and he was able to receive people. Uh, there is likely a temporary release, and then the second time he's in uh, prison, he is in much more grave conditions, uh, likely under Nero, and just prior to his martyrdom. And so uh, the writings that occur here, you can see a different level of a sense of coming to the end or a sense of hope and a sense of instruction as a result. But even in the letter to the Ephesians, for example, it has occurred while he's in prison, but after he spent a significant amount of time there in his previous missionary journeys. So those are the overviews of the letters written during his travels or as a result of his travels, and they're the context for the Pauline writings. I've provided a number of maps. For example, this map here gives you a sense of his first missionary journey, and most illustrated Bibles have uh, a number of the, uh, the three missionary journeys outlined and the cities that he go through and has gone through. And I wanted to use this as an example You'll see at the top of the map a reference to Acts 13, uh, verses 4 through 14, and verse 28. Uh, so uh, we can see this here, for example, in Acts 13. First, Paul is sent out on this uh, missionary journey. He's sent out from Antioch, where um, uh, he's set apart by the Holy Spirit. He's laid hands on by the elders, and after prayers and fasting and the laying on of hands, they send them off. He, both he and Barnabas go off on the first missionary journeys, but you'll particularly see here that in verse in chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, for example, we begin to see uh, the cities that are on the map. So in verse 4, you see they sail to Cyprus. In verse 5, they arrived at Salamis. Uh, uh, in verse um, uh, uh, 13, you see that they go from Perga to Pamphylia. Um, and then to Antioch in Pisidia. There are two Antiochs. This is the Antioch in Galatia. Uh, in verse 51 of chapter 13, you see they went uh, to Iconium. At this point, they're actually shaking their dust off and leaving Iconium. Uh, and now in verse 6 of chapter 14, they are fled to Lystra and Derbe and Lyconia. And so you see the the cities that they're going to, these make up the, some of these make up the cities of Galatia, uh, which is an area or a region that we end up getting a letter from Paul after these travels back to the region. And this would be what would be called a circular epistle, which was meant to be circulated or sent around to the cities or the churches of the area. And so it's not a specific, sometimes Paul will write a specific letter to a specific church or a specific person and on a specific issue. Uh, sometimes there will be a general letter sent out, which is a, a circular letter meant to be shared and distributed, but also meant to deal with a doctrinal issue broadly. Um, and so we have that as the case in his second missionary journeys. 
as well as his third missionary journeys. We have the travels, we have the establishment of churches, we have the preaching of the gospel, and then the explanation of doctrine as a result of that. And we get to um, enjoy, as a result of the Pauline letters, the instruction that comes out of the instruction to these churches, because obviously uh, Paul, by way of the Holy Spirit, was not just instructing these churches, but instructing the Church of Christ as a whole on uh, what he's being led to by the Lord and uh, how he's being led to live the practical Christian life. And that's really my prayer for us in this New Testament Survey 2 course, is that we uh, look to the scriptures and have it touch our hearts and touch our minds so that we walk away with an understanding of not just some theoretical faith that is uh, book-filled or uh, head knowledge, or and uh, but something that actually uh, impacts our hearts, uh, that leads us to uh, a deeper understanding, not just of who Jesus Christ is, but uh, who he intends us to be in the creation that he's brought us into and uh, meant for us as his uh, followers and believers to represent him to the rest of the world. Uh, so my prayer for us is that we would um, gain a deeper understanding of that, and not just understanding, but a walk and a, a way to share that with the rest of the world so that uh, it would uh, allow for a greater witness and a testimony of what it means to be in Christ, uh, which is something that Paul teaches often in his letters. I look forward to... Uh, uh, seeing you next week in our next lesson, where we'll focus on the letter uh, by Paul to the Galatians. Thank you and amen.